Hello everyone, so as promised I'm going to make an augmented reality for Internet of Things tutorial as the demo version uh, has received over 500 likes already. So we will start from the basics. We're going to Vuporia developer portal. We should log in and go to develop tab and target manager. I will add a database EOT, okay? It was used EOTAR. And I will add the tracker which was used in the demo itself. So I have it on the desktop already. This one, Shutterstock, okay? and let's say five let's update the website okay it has four star that will do for us and let's download this database for unity editor and let's move it to the desktop The next thing we will do is go to the downloads and download for Unity. So for your plugin 559 version. So it will take for a few seconds and while it's downloading let's generate a license key. Actually if you have some generated previously you can use that once if you don't just generate a brand new one and leave it all by the defaults over here and just confirm it. Let's filter by date and over here we will have our key for augmented reality for AR camera, okay? So I'm moving the plug, downloaded plugin to the desktop and uh, a reminder, use 32-bit Unity. Okay, 64-bit Unity is not supported with Euphoria. Okay, let's create a new project and name it EOTAR Tutorial. Okay, and I will save it on the desktop over here. Create project. It will open up in a second. So the next thing we will do is go to Assets, Import Package, Custom Package and we will select Euphoria plugin, 559 version. Import. Okay, we have it already in the project and I will import our tracker image. Import. Okay, uh, what I'm going to do next is I'm on the desktop, I do have EOT content. Over here you can find a few scripts which is basically data acquisition from the cloud and some pictures I'm going to use uh, for user interface, okay? So basically let's move, drag and drop this folder to our project place over here. It's already in. And by default from Euphoria catalog 
and prefabs we are going to move the AR camera and also image target over here so I already have the key over here let's copy it into the app license key over here uh, also don't forget to check box those two check boxes to tick those ones okay and with AR camera it's all done and what we need to do next is select image target and select database we created is AOT AR and it's only one image target so it's it's already on the plane over here okay so what's next next what I'm going to do is actually create a user interface okay so let's go to U UE and canvas UI canvas and select screen space no sorry world space over here render mode world space and if you click it twice on the canvas you will see that it's a really big big one right so what we're going to do is rescale it a little bit let's click it twice and let's move this canvas to our image target zero zero the position of the canvas as you can see the image target is still so small uh, so let's try to decrease even more by 10 times our canvas and a little bit more oh, sorry let's select canvas and let's rotate a little bit not y x okay i will then add a component to it which will be image and in EOT I do have a picture that I'm going to put over here but as you can see we need a sprite one so select innovation uh, image and over here select sprite duty apply when we applied it we can put this innovation over here and yeah we can see it already let's make it a little bit transparent as in the demo itself and what else uh, we'll change the size a little bit more yeah let's make it like let's make it like that looks okay actually okay um maybe like that okay the next thing I'm going to do is um, add some buttons to it I'm going to the uh, canvas right now and rotation I will make zero it will be easier for me to make those buttons so 0 0.5 0 0.5 let's move it here move it here yeah that's what we need uh, I think we should yeah right now it's something that I want it to be and uh, make sure source image UI sprite will be deleted it won't have some rounded corners and I will leave it like that for now so let's make the color normal color of it like that and let's duplicate this button and okay over here this one will be temperature button temperature button this one will be humidity button and 
I'm going to add some text to it. Uh, some text will will change, and some is more of a of an informational text. So over here, text will be the white one. Let's say it's just informing that this button is for temperature. Temperature. Let's scale it down. Zero point five, zero point five. Let's change the position of X and the Y to zero. And yeah, you can see it's stretched a little bit right now. Let's make it bold one. Yeah, we should increase the size. I think this will do. No, 1.5. Okay. The temperature. The one. Okay. What's next? The temperature will be in Celsius. Okay, let's decrease a little bit more. Three. And so over here info text and I'm going to generate once more the same but right now I'm going to enter that this is a, a value text that will change when we will acquire the data from the sensors so I will make it bigger I will center it and over here zero zero it will look like now it will look like this for now you can you know uh, change it according to your needs it's just an example um 25 that'll do for now and i'm just going to duplicate those one and uh, put it in a humidity button and when it's done like that, I'm just going to zero it. And over here, zero it too. Just that over here, it's already not the temperature, but it's a humidity in percentage. Humidity percentage. Okay. Uh, let's duplicate those two buttons and change accordingly the information. So over here we um, did have some light information. So let's change the name light over here. Light and over here percentage. Over here we did have a motion per motion sensor so okay motion button and motion it's basically the motion is detected or not so I will just motion write it motion here and over here this part will change detected or not detected let's say over here right now it's not available what else we do need a few more buttons I will just copy duplicate those two and move it down and we did also had an ultraviolet actually I will delete this one or maybe no I will leave it for now This one will be ultraviolet, ultraviolet, and 
let's change it instead of live to ultra wild percentage not available over here we will change the time and currently it was 0, 0.0 well it will change later on and I did also have some few control buttons I will also just duplicate those two but I will change the color of it at once so we could distinguish it so control button 1 control button 1 and control button 2 control and we need to change the information itself so over here let's make it by default off over here control pin and the next one is also off and info text control Okay. So that's it for now. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to create a code container over here. Code container. So okay, what we're going to do next is drag and drop some scripts into the code container that we just created from the IoT content catalog. So let's check the code container. And I have removed the post script, which was over here. So as you can see, uh, IoT is the script for handling all the user interface we have and putting all the needed data into it. So firstly we should drag and drop our image target into this place. So let's do that. So the height place is basically for the canvas itself which which will hide our canvas when the image target will be lost and uh, why do we need that because you know the content is not represented when the image is image tracking is lost well sometimes some parts of the uh, of the content appears on the screen even when we don't track anything okay so let's uh, let's move some other information to those parts put this while text into the temperature text humidity text micro humidity text we're going to put while text into humidity text so, well basically basically every wall text should go over here to according uh, sensors so light one is here so light one is for the photoresistor ultraviolet goes over here motion text goes over here and time text goes here and over here we should add the buttons itself so let's start from the beginning temperature then humidity light button motion ultraviolet and this button um, we won't use actually those one anymore I will just disable it Oh. Okay, the next thing we're 
we should not forget is that well not we but you should not forget is entering this proper link uh, over here to read stream script we will open up our particle website particle.io and you should enter over here top right corner basically what we have here is the code for a microcontroller what happens here we uh, read the data from temperature sensor, humidity, light motion and ultraviolet sensor everything takes place in the loop over here and if we press it flash uh, this code will be uploaded to our microcontroller we can verify whether everything is written correctly over here and it's actually this code is also compatible with Arduino but Arduino don't have such user interface well cloud-based user interface let's just say like that I will actually copy this code so you could reuse it it's also compatible with Arduino microcontroller and it has the same file extension which is dot you know or I know I don't know uh, by default it's putting himself into the folder for some reason oh I already have it I already saved this script and it's just that it won't load at least from my computer because I don't have the needed libraries at the moment but it's all on the website over here so basically you just verify it flash it to your photon particle microcontroller and the next thing you will need to do flashing the next thing flash successful is you should go to your dashboard what you're going to see in your dashboard is well actually you should be able to see whether your photon particle is up or not so mine is up and running this is the time current time so if I go to the logs in just a few seconds I should see all the information acquired from the sensors so okay as you can see it's already here we do see all the data from our sensors and what, what read stream script does in, in unity is acquiring such information from the cloud okay so basically humidity data 43 ultraviolet data 30 temperature data 25 and so on but what we also need over here you should press the circle and we need this link uh, having this link you should copy it and paste it over here so I think after that you should not have any trouble acquiring the data from your photon particle over the cloud okay and we just can test it out right now let's play it as you can see user interface appeared and all the data is in their according position so basically if I'm going to do it like that 
you can compare the data whether everything is correct. So as you can see currently from the particle website, we can see that light date is 51, humidity 43, temperature 25, ultraviolet 30, and the time is actually not as squared from here. Well, um, I think that's basically it. I won't go into provide you the schematics how to connect all the sensors to your photon particle because it's quite basic. You should be able to do it by yourselves. Let's try to heat up the temperature sensor. I have the microcontroller over here. It actually updates not instantly. As you can see, the temperature haven't changed yet. Uh, and that's because I have, pro, uh, I have in the code uh, a slight delay of 300 milliseconds. And that's between every single data reading. That's because sometimes the photon particle website can't handle fast uh, data streams. Okay? So basically, if you will have some trouble, trouble seeing the data like that, uh, this way, you should try to decrease sorry, not to decrease, but increase this value to experiment more with it, okay? Maybe in some cases 100 is just the way it should be, maybe even less. Okay, I, I can see that nothing has changed. Let's actually, for an easier way I will just cover the photoresistor and see what happens next. Okay, you can see that the temperature already changed a little bit. The lights also 44. Fifty-three and so on. As you can also see uh, our rectangle color also changes depending on the uh, depending on the measurements from sensors, okay? And you can find this color change in IoT script. So that's it for now, and see you in next tutorials.